Welcome back to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Today, we would like to talk about the pros of doing service and technology clinics from the unique point of view of some great panelists who are here with us today. Uh, this panel, by the way, is the brainchild of Marco Zwanenberg, to whom we're all indebted, uh, technician extraordinaire. Uh, quickly introduce the panel. Uh, everyone will know Sean Kingry. Uh, Sean, thank you for being with us today. Uh, Cindy Reynolds, great friend of the Fixed Ops Roundtable community. Uh, Coralie Zuf is here with us today. And uh, welcome. And uh, of course, Sean Parrott from Mercedes-Benz of Farmington, part of the Champ Automotive Group. Uh, Marco, give us a little bit of the color, uh, some of the backstory on service and technology clinics, because you and I have talked about this for quite a while. Yes, yes we have that. And for me, it's always been a great, great way to lift the veil of mystery and secrecy off the service department. It actually gives the customer a good, good glimpse on what is going on actually in fixed ops, explain to them how things are done and bring them back into the shop as we look at their car, as we hook up the computer to it and just show them what the car is all about. This to me brings so much value and trust in the relationship with your customer that you just cannot get with anything else. It really personalizes the service and it puts faces to the names that they would only see on their paperwork besides meeting with the advisors, of course, face to face. So it's to me, it's a, it's a PR stunt. It's a, a very good way to build a great report with your customers to build trust, to put value in what you offer and to just keep these customers coming, build retention with these customers. Sean Kingry, here we have a technician telling us about the benefits <laughs> of having a, a clinic for the customers. And you remember that we did a lot of these in the past that may have stopped the last two or three years, but um, there's a certain need uh, to be able to engage the customer. There is, and I think the angle for Marco even goes a bit step further where we all know the service clinics how many, how many after delivery, and again, we're coming from the fixed ops side, how many of the clients come in one week, two weeks, a month, their first, their first service visit after ownership and don't have a clue how to operate their vehicle? And we're actually delivering the vehicle on their first service. If you call it what it is, half of them don't know what their navigation is. Half of them don't even know they have navigation at that point. Because again, we go back to the time of sale. I'm not picking on the variable side, but the client's under the ether. Listen, they've been there all day. It's a Saturday. It's a long day. They had to wait an hour and a half for finance. You know, those darn finance people. They had to wait for finance forever. Okay. And at, when it comes to delivery, they just want to go home. They've been there all day. The kids have been there all day. They haven't eaten. And next thing you know, they're on the service drive asking, hey, what does this mean? Or, hey, what does this mean? Or, hey, what does this mean? And the sale, the salesperson's nowhere to be found. And what do we do? We grab the Marcos of the world and we bring them out. And we make them show how to do a delivery or how the things work. Because quite frankly, they know best because they're the ones that fix them. The service advisors don't know any better. I'm not picking on the advisors, but that's not what we train them to do. So when we miss that step at time of delivery, it's the Marcos of the world, which is kind of where, quite frankly, the, 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 as we're talking about, the, the clinics come into play. Where you bring a manager, you bring a writer, you bring a general manager, and you bring a technician out. And as Marco said, you, you you show it all. Here's what it is. Here's who we are. And here's how your vehicle really works. Love it. Cindy, um, Sean's right. There's so much technology now in these vehicles that, uh, you know, I took delivery of a, a new vehicle recently. And, uh, you know, by the way, I, I did get introduced to a large part of that technology, but nowhere near what I need. And one part they left out, they didn't introduce me to the service department, Cindy. So um, what are your thoughts on this? You know, my thoughts on it are is that we have to even take a step back and we need to work with our team to, to answer a question. And I think the most important question to start with is, is why should anyone use your service department over any other repair facility? And, and I think that's just a good place to start. You can discern from that, uh, you know, from your team what they're thinking, get the ideas I think it gives you an opportunity to create a well thought out written plan that that's that's part of a customer journey through their entire life cycle through service. And the and this clinic for the technology is and and the service part is just part of that journey. 
And how many times does that fit in? And, and when does it fit in during the life cycle? I think it's also an opportunity, like you're saying, to showcase several things, you know, to showcase your team. You should have someone from your leadership team. You should have people from your sales. It should be even an owner involved. And, and there should be a divided time. You should have a group time, but you should also break out into individual one-on-one -on -one time and have someone, and that includes everyone there, is paired with someone. They can give them the information they're looking for. If they don't know, you go to the person there that does that can help you with that. And then I think, you know, it's, it's showcasing. It's a time to showcase your team. It's a time to showcase their vehicle. It's a time to showcase, uh, you know, like why should someone do service with you, but what can they expect during that experience? You know, an example would be if they are going to be someone that waits for service, then what can let them know what they can expect. Do you have a, a you know space set up that if it's someone that needs to do a Zoom meeting while they're there, do you have private space for them to go and do that Zoom meeting? What if something happens if they're there, it's going to take longer. Set the expectation of what will happen. Like, what are your alternatives if they're going to be there longer than expected and they have other needs that need to be met? And then it's also an opportunity, you know, to, to showcase your technology that you're paying money for that creates efficiencies in your service. You know, show them what you do use that creates, you know, transparency, creates the convenience for the customer. So I think there's so many things that we can do with a service and technology clinic. I think we have to be more creative. It can't be what we've always done in the past. Mm -hmm. I think it has to be some new ideas. Uh, it can't just be serve me food, give me a drink, I'm out the door. <laughs> that was a waste of my time. I mean, it's kind of like if you could send it to me in an email, then send it to me in a Zoom, but, I, you know, a recorded session. But I really would love some hands on while I'm there. I love it, Cindy. Sean Parrott, um, you've got a lot of experience on the Mercedes side with these. And, uh, you know, let's talk frankly about, uh, you know, what it is and what's really needed out in the market. Yeah, well, I've seen uh, how it's changed over the years. It used to be that they would bring the vehicle in and you actually have a clinic. For a lot of our customers, the first time they've ever seen their vehicle up in the air. You know, they can see things underneath, you know, take a look at different things they don't really hear about. And I think, unfortunately, it's shifted now where it's marketed as a way to win back customers, but in the wrong way. Whereas you send invites out, you promise, you know, free gift or whatever it could be. And you bring a customer in that you haven't seen in a while rather than the customers that's been coming to your dealership, you know, regularly. And then you mark it as we'll get your vehicle, we'll look over it, let you know anything, and we'll give you a percentage off. And I think sometimes is it sounds good in the planning stages, but then you have the customer that they haven't been to you for a few years. So they found another place to get their vehicle serviced. And now you're welcoming them back and basically saying to them, okay, here's all your repairs you need. Here's your free gift and here's, you know, repairs, but we'll give you some, some money off. And I think it just goes wrong because now they already had a bad taste in their mouth for whatever reason. They're trying to come back and now you're basically, you know, shoving them away again. And I think that's like I said, it's about the marketing rather than welcoming me in. Don't you have to try to sell them something that you're showing them about their vehicle? You know, you're putting a car in air, you're showing them, hey, here's how old brake pads look, here's how aftermarket parts look. And I think that's what as as a lot of our franchises are doing, they're they're getting away from just taking care of the customer and they're basically looking for a way to make money. Like that's only if if you don't make money that day or upsell so many vehicles, it was a failure rather than, hey, we've seen, you know, 20 or 30 customers we haven't seen in a few years. And I think they need to take out the money aspect of it and look at the success of how many people you got there rather than your upsells. Sean Perry, just go a step further. You serve yeah. a luxury franchise there uh, with yeah. Mercedes Benz. I know you're a Mercedes customer as well. Yeah. Um, you lead a big parts operation there, Sean. Um, yeah. Do Mercedes customers, do they all know everything about the vehicle uh, at time of delivery or are there opportunities there? <laughs> no, they, they don't. And that's the biggest thing is like, there's so many different things, you know, like um, to go over the, you just can't go over we with active delivery after a car sale. And it's just, there's so many things that's going back. Um, we had a car show here a few months ago 
and people were just hanging around. And one of the guys said, hey, we'd love to see your facility. I, I said, no problem at all. I'll give you a tour. And we must have got about 30 or 40 people. And they were so amazed by everything from the alignment machine to some of the stuff we use as technicians. And I think that's things where if you had a customer on a service plant and say, look, this is the reason our labor rate is what it is, is because of these are the type of tools we have. This is the newest technology we're using to diagnose your vehicles. That builds value. And we all know that's what we sell. Mm -hmm. We sell value. I love it. That is powerful. Yeah. Coralie, um, what's, what's your perspective? I think now is the perfect time to bring back the service and technology clinics because, um, you know, for the past so many years, two years, people haven't been able to do anything as much. So having an exciting event to go to right off the bat, you know, people have the FOMO or fear of missing out, right? Mm -hmm. For starters there. And Vehicles now, like you guys have mentioned, have so much technology on them. Um, you know, people might be used to checking their oil with a dipstick, right? And aren't used to, it doesn't have one anymore. So just sharing those features to somebody and clearing up that confusion is a big thing. Um, I know on my own vehicle, just figuring out like how to put, how to put the two keys to each person who has one. And recently I changed my battery. So it's gone from Fahrenheit to Celsius, and I have no idea how to do that on my own. I don't want to read the instruction, right? I'd much rather come and socialize with somebody, have that one-on-one -on -one time, and have somebody show me and explain to me how to do it as opposed to, you know, reading through my manual. And right. at, at Christmas time, um, there was a big thing with customers coming in because some people have one of everything, and you just don't know what to get them, right? Uh, so I had spouses coming in ordering keys because they're like, oh, my, you know, my husband lost one key, but he doesn't want to order another one. So that's a Christmas present. And then another one was floor mats. So it's the perfect time to, you know, mm. figure out what they need. And it might be a present um, as well as if they bought their vehicle in the spring coming into wintertime now, they might not have purchased the snow tires that they need. So it's the perfect opportunity to just start talking about that. Sean Kingry, uh, you lead uh, Kaiser Automotive Group, uh, seven dealerships there uh, in Wisconsin. And previously, you oversaw a, uh, a much bigger group uh, with 20-some stores. Talk to us about the last couple of years um, and even prior to that, you know, in terms of these types of clinics and, uh, you know, the need for engaging customers. Sure. And, you know, and, and again, being coming from Florida, where, by the way, COVID didn't exist, and it didn't. And you come to Wisconsin where it did exist and there's still masks here. I think we used it as an excuse to get away from them. To be to be very candid, we did. We used it as a, as a, as a crutch not to do them. I don't excuse that, but we did. And now that you come to it, I think the two things we're forgetting, and, and I'm going to re refer back to one of our old panels here in a second, but is first of all, autonomous vehicles, guys, I try not to use words I can't spell, but they're here. They're coming. They're not going anywhere. You talk about technology and training. There are clients that, including myself, being north of 50 now, who autonomous vehicles are, are foreign. We didn't know what they were, but they're coming. And Ted and Marco, you and I have been on a lot of panels together talking about what is EV going to do to the service business? Guys, you're looking for a reason to bring the client back to service because we're going to lose those because maintenance is going away. Back to core leave conversation, checking dipsticks. There are no more dipsticks to check. They're going away. Now this gives you another reason to bring a client in on the clinic to show them how EV works because it is a completely different thing. And that's that's a whole different angle to the probably than where maybe Marco wanted this panel to go. But clinics and EV, it's a real thing. It's coming. It's here. They're already here. Ted, we yeah. talk about the lightning all the time. I mean, it's it's a it's a regular conversation. Yes. I know we're not all like Tully and being out in California where it's going to be mandated soon. But guys, if we don't look at it, we're going to be behind the times ourselves. And if we don't do it, somebody else will. But Ted, to answer your question, it is different. I do think that being in a college town in Madison, Wisconsin, you have an educated you have an educated person here. Okay, you do. It's a very hardcore educated. It's a college based town. A lot of professors. Being in Florida, which was heavy military, and also a lot of senior citizens. It's a whole different market, but it doesn't change the outcome. Everybody still wants to know how their vehicles work. And again, we're all under the ether. We just want to go home with our brand new car, and we don't listen to half of it. And you know, who on this panel still has an owner's manual for those that have them that are still wrapped in plastic in the glove box? Or who's even aware that anymore they don't give owner's manuals? They're available on a drive. I mean, you don't even know because you don't open them up. To Coralie's point, you don't know how to change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius. 
Yeah. Because you don't want to read and you don't want to look. Marco, I'm listening to what Sean Parrott just said a few minutes ago about showing the, the customers who wanted to come in and take a look, and they weren't there for that purpose, but he ended up with quite a few people looking at things like the alignment machine. I had David Boyle here, Marco, earlier today, mm -hmm. and I think he would be proud to see, have customers looking at that equipment and realizing and building value in that, Marco. Exactly. Uh, value is, is a big thing. And I don't know, Sean, if you, used to, you remember a couple of years back when Mercedes-Benz did the Customer One Action Tour, when value was one of the main points that we're trying to bring. Customers will pay, but they have to know the value. How can we bring value? By being on the phone or using any kind of social media or any kind of email or service to show them pictures or videos? Or can you actually walk them through the store and show them, have a vehicle on the alignment machine with the hats hooked up and the readings going? Have them see how miraculously beams through the sky, measure the vehicle, they will be blown away. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be so in depth that people just don't know what you're talking about. Keep it simple, but seeing is believing. Um, let them see a technician's toolbox, for example. Most people are just flabbergasted by the amount of tools that technicians need nowadays to fix these vehicles. Um, have a one or two vehicles hooked up to a scan tool and show them what they can do. And to Sean's point, how many people have not seen their car from down below? To have the car hanging up in the air and just seeing what an exhaust looks like nowadays with all the sensors and wires and dampeners and valves in it. Just show them what their vehicle is like. And then when you have to call the customer somewhere down the line, it's like, sorry, Mr. X, but it's taking us a little bit more time to diagnose your vehicle. Now to go like, well, yeah, I kind of remember. It's not like, oh, there's the engine, there's the tailpipe. No, there's a space shuttle in between. <laughs> so people can actually put thought to what is going on in the service department. So these are all great and excellent points. And to Sean's point, Yes, EVs are coming, and it's about time that we, as a collective in, in the, the automotive industry, stop being reactive and start being proactive. Why is it that when a new model gets launched, we have the whole showroom is decked out, we have this catering, there's this, we have all these people are invited to come look at this one new model, which they can't even buy yet, but here it is, because it's doing a cross-country tour. Why can we not do this for fixed ops? where you can get what you need right now. Make us the show horse. Because after all, fixed up pays the bills. Marco, you had to twist my arm uh, three and a half years ago to do the very first fixed ops roundtable. And I know you remember the discussions because you and I had lunch in Florida and I said, I'm not sure if anybody would show up if there'd be interest in this kind of fixed ops. And now here, right. you're talking, here you are, and of course we've seen what happened, here we are talking about, again, something new, and I think there's great value in, in what we're discussing today. Absolutely, Ted. And this keeps on growing. Well, like I said, was it last night during the, the live show, that what we needed was a peer-to-peer, -peer, all within the industry, just a bunch load of people from all different ranks in the fixed ops department talking to each other, with each other, bringing ideas out in the open, be open to ideas and be fresh minded about how everything works, how we can help each other. And this is what we have been doing from day one. You remember your office in New York City? It was a sardine can that day. Absolutely. And it's grown exponentially since. And you, as much as anyone else, can tell that how much this was needed and how much we keep on growing. So, Cindy, you know, here we are talking about fixed ops. And I would say over the last, I don't know, seven, eight, maybe a little bit more years, this uh, advanced driver assistance, ADAS, has really come into its own. And there is so much now on the car that we don't know as as employees at the dealership uh maybe marco knows okay but as a con consumer i don't know but i'm flabbergasted cindy at a lot of the stuff now that's on that vehicle and it, it's almost like a self like my cell phone right you know on on wheels because it's so advanced and cindy there's just so much that 
constantly needs to be explained. And then, Cindy, we've got these over-the-air updates that have started now and are going to be a, a huge part of the business, Cindy Reynolds. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, I, I love the idea because I think what we're talking about here is, is you know, just a whole new revolution of the car. And, and having service and technology panels to help us explain and educate people is going to be more important than ever. Uh, it, it, you know, we have all different types of age groups. You know, we see the commercials on television about how a car will parallel park for us. It's going to break for us. I mean, it does all of these things. I mean, when you think about it, in some ways there, you almost feel scared. I mean, it's like... Mm -hmm. So, so it's like, why would you not have the dealership be the first place that you actually test those things? Like before you actually go out and do them, that should be part of what a service and technology clinic helps you do. If you're uncomfortable, you've never done it before. You're not even sure how to do it. Like, help me do that. Show me how that works. Get me comfortable with it uh, so that, so that I can be a proponent with other people about it. You know, I think the whole point of all of these things and the goal is ultimately to build trust and yeah. to be a partner with your customers through the life cycle of their ownership, as well as the, the choice for their next purchase. It's all the small details of the things that we're discussing tonight that that makes that happen. It's not some one big event. It's over time and again. It has to be viewed as a customer journey. I have no idea how some of the technology works. You know, I think we've all sat here and admitted that. So help us. <laughs> like that's what we're asking dealerships to do is help us. And I think that this will help, you know, the client, you know, your clientele base out there understand, which is dealerships, how important and critical this is to the future, not only of the life of the dealership, but the customer journey and their return and their recommendations that they make to others about where they should buy a car because, hey, they actually helped me do that. Like, like they helped me see and do the, the parallel parking or they showed me how the car breaks on its own. So that because otherwise you're, you're apprehensive about it. So I think this is a great beginning, a great starting point, And hopefully this will be a, a, a panel that's included for some time to come, because I think it's going to evolve. I think back uh, to the uh, Automax uh, technicians uh, panel, uh, the very first time out and maybe even the second time out and how that has grown tremendously. Uh, Sean Parrott, a little secret here at the round table and it's no secret that we have a, you know, a couple sponsors, more than a few, right, on the roundtable. But when they, you know, come at the first time or the second time and they say, Ted, you know, what should I talk about? How should I talk about my product? How should I sell my product? The secret that I tell them is don't sell. Don't do any selling. Make it educational. Make it interesting. And make it informational, Sean Parrott. Um, and you know what? The very, very best presenters at the roundtable I have found over the years, they're not selling, okay? They're not selling at all. Um, and I think to some of the big names, right? The Les Silvers and uh, the John Travers and, and many, many more, um, they don't sell. They're giving good information. And Sean Parrott, I think in a, in a setting like this for customers, for service and technology, that would go a long way. Yeah, that's the biggest thing is like, you know, everybody knows if they're being sold or not. Yeah. They know that in the first few minutes, you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if it's in this field or whatever. I mean, we all have the bad thing about the service providers and the used car salesmen. We all have that feeling. So, I mean, that's the biggest thing is like you have to show that you're there for the person. Why are we doing this? We are there We as, as fixed ops. We're not we're here to make money, but we're also here to to basically help the customer get the best value out of their car. And I think that's what people lost. You know, they're trying to take advantage, you know, the customer sometimes, whereas like the reason we're doing this stuff is to prolong the life of your vehicle. And I think as, as us as employees, that's what we need to the customer to understand. Yeah, I love it. And at Shomp, you the Shomp organization does a lot of things different and a lot of things right. And I know, like, for example, on the sales side, you know, they became uh, that one price dealer many years ago. Uh, and then uh, that one person handling the whole transaction. And then, you know, in the more recent past, doing the entire sale in one hour. All right. And, you know, Shomp is known for that. And I see something like this as a differentiator as well for, for groups such as yours and many others 
as well. So, yeah, I noticed that with Sean Kingry, he's talking about like, you know, the kids being there all day, waiting on a finance guy for an hour and a half. And we don't have that. We, um, the salesperson or client advisor takes it from beginning to end. It takes about an hour, unless a snack comes up. I mean, we, fortunately, we just don't have that here. Everybody's in and out. That is refreshing and amazing. Um, and Coralie, that's one of the things that all of us have experienced on both sides of, you know, of the time it takes to the transaction. All right. And, um, you know, here's a great opportunity, you know, to showcase. I think that was the word that uh, I think some of you used earlier, you know, the, uh, the service and parts city, uh, Coralie. Yeah, for sure. I was thinking back to Marco saying to bring people in the shop and have a look under their vehicle. Uh, I remember the first time I invited a, a lady to come have a look under her vehicle and usually her husband handled the vehicle maintenance. However, he wasn't able to come in. So she did. So when I invited her in her face lit up because it was actually something on her bucket list to like have a look and see what was underneath her vehicle. She was so excited. So I'll never forget that. Like how excited to see that on a customer's face. Um, and thinking now too, like in my area where I am, catalytic converter theft is a huge thing right now. We just had somebody go through the town. They've gone through the dealerships and stealing them. And most people don't know what a catalytic converter is. So to invite them in, to have a look under a vehicle and be like, uh-huh, this is where it lives. This is what it does. And that's what they're stealing. So just to put like a, a picture to the part that they're seeing in the newspaper and online would be a huge thing. Could you, that would just be amazing for someone. Marco, there's a lot of, there's a lot of meat on the bone. Okay. With this, uh, with this topic, Marco. Absolutely. Uh, I think we've uh, barely scratched the surface on this. I'm going to, um, uh, and I hadn't prepared the panel for this today, but I want to go around the panel um, just 30 seconds for everybody and give you a few minutes to think about it. What's one thing you could recommend uh, to our audience who may want to get involved in some kind of a service technology clinic? One thing they could consider doing over the next few months to, you know, get started in this type of thing. And, and while you're thinking about that, uh, real quick, uh, Marco, coming back to you, um, on the Mercedes side, you had a lot of experience in uh, in doing this, just as, as Sean Parrott did as well. Uh, what prompted you, Marco, to bring this back up now, you know, so much time later? Because if one thing has shown us over the past few years is that people are dying for personal, mm. interpersonal communication. Not mm. in front of the screen, no Zoom calls, no phone calls, no text messages, no nothing. We are all social bunch we like to get together we, we like to be personal so what better way to re-spark and reignite the interest in your vehicle and the dealership by being personal with service clinics i love it um who'd like to take a a shot at that one thing that uh, you'd recommend to the audience that we could do i'll take the lead on that one ted first to start i think you start with the old dog i mean listen us old car guys as we call ourselves now and i'm there now by the way i as i say i'm in q4 of my career we all know what works we've done this before we've seen this before yeah. and one thing i'm going to back into and it'll be 30 seconds i promise ted is you know we talked about the service walk we've talked about it during a hundred of your hundred of your sessions ted yeah. guys let's not fool ourselves the service walks don't happen anymore right. they should we talk about it but they don't really happen and this is a great opportunity to, to bridge that gap. So back back to your question, Ted. I think you get with the old dogs, those of us that have done it. We teach them. We teach them how to do it. Take the lead on the first one so that everybody else feels because nobody's going to be comfortable the first time they do it. I promise you. But after you do it the first time, it becomes fun, especially when that client comes in next time and asks you by name. Ask for you by name. That's the key. I love it. Very strong. Who would like to take another uh, step at that? I can go next. I was just thinking about um, service advisors should start documenting um, a list of stuff that they're asked repeatedly. Like, where is the key drop box? You know, the drive, like some people, it, you know, are notorious for like stopping at the garage instead of completely driving in. Things that they're repeating constantly. Um, you know, like what, yeah. what time do you close at? How long does a service take? So all these things that are taking up time and, you know, you might be feeling annoyed about answering, make a list and this would be the perfect time to go over it. You say it once and then you have, you know, your audience of like, what, 10, 20, 30 people. Now they know and that's going to save you time in the future. 
I love it. Great recommendation. Very strong, Corley. Good. Um, uh, Cindy and uh, and Sean, uh, who'd like to ask? I think I think I would go back to what I shared. I think it's just so important that people answer the question: Why should people use your service over any other repair facility? And involve your team. I mean, it's just so important to get that feedback, and it's so important for everyone to understand how each other thinks, and then you know, to have like, what's your next immediate step after the service and technology clinic? You know, I would love it if I received a handwritten note that was just a thank you from the person that I engaged yeah. with one-on-one. Yeah. And so there's so many different ways yeah. you could take this. So that's what I would offer up in 30 seconds. Very strong, Cindy. I love it. Super Sean Parrott. I, I think more or less you have, you have to do something recurring. I think rather than doing it once every other year, something where a lot of places are doing these clinics. I think you should do something recurring, maybe once a quarter, once a month, where you go over certain things like um, Corley mentioned, what are the top things that they're having questions about in the service drive? It's like Home Depot or those places like that. Like every month they have some kind of fix-it class. Well, why not to have that for your dealership where once a month you have a class going over something and, and people can come every month and come once in a while, but people actually can look forward to it. Yeah, I love it. Love it. Marco, I'm coming to you last, and I got to ask you the per proverbial question: What would Marco do? What do you think? <laughs> well, what Marco would do, uh, what worked really well when we had the service clinics at Mercedes here, I ran it in the shop side. The first one or two was all hands on deck; didn't work out that well. What I ended up doing was a hand-picked bunch of technicians, the technicians that were good with communicating, that were good in taking their knowledge and transferring it to the customers that were patient and that were not in it for the sales for the next week, that were their work is their business cards. They're proud of what they're doing. They're proud of sharing their knowledge. That's the kind of guys that you want to have talking to your customers. Love it. We'll have to leave it there, everybody. And uh, Marco, I think we're going to have to come back with a round two on this. Uh, All right, the next let's round do two. it. Yeah, I love it. So you see what happens when we go have lunch together, All right? Look at that, Marco, right? <laughs> exactly. All right. Funny, we haven't done that since, Ted. Imagine what will happen next. Might as well do that next. That's right. Everybody, I want to thank the entire panel. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, first time out at the Service and Technology Clinic panel, uh, Sean Kingry, Cindy Reynolds, Sean Parrott, Corley Zuf, and uh, Marco Zwanenberg. Everybody, the Service and Technology Clinic panel here at the Fixed Ops Roundtable.